This is my best friend, George. George is one of those people you wish you can be like. Always humble and always willing to put your life before his own. George and I met when we were drafted to the Vietnam War in 1969. We were both from Milwaukee. He was going to buy a Mustang and I was going to buy a GTO. We had plans of driving up and down the streets and just having a good time. I could sense a lifelong friendship was forming with an unshakable bond. He was a medic and a damn good one at that. Firebase Henderson was an artillery dump. It was 5 a.m. when we were ambushed by the enemy. An RPG hit, and that set off what seemed like endless explosions. In the middle of the chaos, George caught a bullet to the head, which severed an artery, but he somehow managed to bandage his wound. As soon as he saw me at the bottom of the hill with nothing but a small rock as protection, that's when he crawled down to me. I told him, I knew you would come. George would later say he struggled with that because he actually hesitated. 33 Americans lost their lives that day. I would be there for George after the war. He met his future wife, Lorraine, after she beat him in a game of pool. She was a tough cookie, and I liked her right away. They married in 1974. He worked a number of odd jobs before landing his dream job as a firefighter in 1983. However, I noticed George's emotional wall growing more all the time. I could feel it when we would share a drink. It became a crutch and his only escape out of the hell that we endured. Lorraine didn't know how to help him, so she divorced him in 1985. After years of drinking, George hit rock bottom. One day he woke up in a small apartment less than five dollars in his pocket. In 1988, George reached sobriety and they remarried in 1990 and have been together since. I was with him when he started getting help for his PTSD by going to support groups and getting involved in veterans affairs. In 1981, he co-founded the Milwaukee chapter of the American GI Forum, which reached out to veterans and helped them take advantage of benefits and guide them throughout their healing. Ironically, George never took advantage of it himself. George never forgave himself when I died. He fought hard, but my injuries were too severe to survive. I died that day at Firebase Henderson on May 6, 1970 at 7.30 a.m. He was honored with silver, bronze, and purple heart medals for his gallantry in combat. He put the silver star on my grave, saying I'm the one who deserved that medal. He always would do things like that. To this day, he still has a relationship with my family. They love him dearly. Lorraine developed MS, so he has taken the role as her caregiver. It was because of George that his parents were able to buy their home. George and Lorraine would never have kids of their own, but his sisters say he has been a father figure to their children and continues to teach them valuable life lessons. He cared for his parents when they got sick until they passed away. After retiring, George dedicated his life to helping veterans by serving on as many boards as he could. He is the president of the Allied Veterans Council of Milwaukee, commander of the Milwaukee County Purple Heart Chapter, member of the Milwaukee Soldiers Home Rehabilitation, member of the American Legion, David Valdez Post, War Memorial Center Veterans Board and Advisory Board for Wisconsin Veterans. He feels strongly about making sure veterans get the recognition and help they deserve especially homeless veterans. He says no one who has fought for their country should live under a bridge or a cardboard box. It's simply unacceptable. He still gets recognition for all his work with veterans, charitable donations, and is an inspiration to those around him. If only he knew how proud I am of him. I'm honored to be his best friend and lucky to have been by his side the whole time.